Is that a Moran? That's a Ostrorp. So we've got this Ostrorp hen that I took some video of in the nest box the other day. I thought she was just trying to lay an egg or wasn't sure what the problem was, but you can definitely tell she's struggling to breathe. So we're gonna separate her out and see if we can try to recover her. She's struggling to breathe, you can hear that. So normally during the warm months in the summer, I would put her in here. This is usually where we will keep a bird during the day and then put them in a coop at night somewhere in our, our little medical shed. But it's a little cold. It's a little cold and rainy out here. So we'll just put her right in one of our sort of quail hutch, but there's plenty of room for a chicken in there. So we used to keep quail in this area right here, but it's open right now. So let's put some wood chips in it and we'll, we'll get it all ready for our sick hen. Pulled all the, the feathers from right here. So she's been broody. That's something they'll do to have skin to skin contact with the eggs. I don't see any lice on her. So that's a good sign. So let's get her up here in this cage. Hang on, we gotta put some food and water in here. So we've got a heat lamp up here, help warm her up. So usually the first thing I'll work on is their water. Let's see if we can fix them through that. So I've got this little hydro hen from the store. Let's mix a little bit of that into their water. So I'll do a little scoop of that. And that's got probiotics, electrolytes. That usually gives them a good boost of energy right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Taste lids on. Okay, and then she just needs a little bit of food. We got some feed for her here. So now we got food and water for her, but I need to make sure she's actually eating and drinking because she's just gonna sit here and she'll eventually just stop. Her body's working really hard to get breath right now, and so we really need to get her to start eating okay. and drinking over here. Here you go. All right, so it's, it's not looking great. We've got to get her to, to drink more here, but. I think as this starts to get into her system, should start to help a little bit, and then with the heat here, hoping that'll warm her up from being outside in the cold. We'll keep checking on her every few hours and make sure that she's eating and drinking throughout the day. I hope our hen makes it. I'm gonna have to check on it two times at yeah. night. Like, You're gonna check on her at night? Yeah. Okay. Like, first chore and last chore. That's a good idea. What are you guys doing? You guys are in our hay bin. Yeah. We've got Tiger and Bald here. Being cute in our little hay pile. So it's day two and I do see some improvements. There's definitely some labored breathing here. What I like to see is that she's a lot more mobile. She's she's getting around better and a lot more active today. But along with eating and drinking, getting warm under this, this light in here, I wanna make sure that the breathing issue continues to improve. Because if she keeps struggling like this, her body's just gonna give out at some point. So we'll take our little solution here, mix it in the water. That way she's getting some fresh water with some fresh probiotics in it. So yesterday was day three and it was pretty discouraging with our sick ostrilor pen. She was breathing very calmly and then as soon as I started working with her trying to make sure she was drinking and just checking on her she started to really panic and breathe heavily and so I left her alone and today she looks like she's doing a little better. So I hope I'm catching her at a good time. Got another way we're gonna deal with this sickness. Okay, so here she is. She's looking pretty good right now. I like that. Just a little bit of heavy breathing there, you can see. So we've just taken this water inside to warm it up and I'll show you why we did that. So we have this Vetrix to deal with respiratory symptoms in birds. So we took this inside and warmed it up as well as some water. And then we mix this in, a little bit of this in with our warm water because it mixes better in warm water than it does cold water. Not only does she have this in her water, we can also directly put this in her mouth 
and we can put it on her head and under her wings. And so I think it's similar to like a vapo rub on a person. And so we'll see if this will make a bigger impact quicker. As soon as I pick her up, she gets a little worked up, which I don't like that, but we've got to give her some of this directly to her. Yeah, kind of smells like a vapo rub. I'm going to get a little bit of this in the tube. So I'm going to try to get some of this down her throat. There we go. Oh, don't knock it off. Good, that one definitely got down her throat. And then for this round, we're just gonna put a little bit around her nose, and we're gonna put a little under her wing as well. Other side. And since we've been working with this girl for a while, I asked the boys to come up with a name for her. So what do you guys think? You guys have any ideas? What would go with like an A name that would go with Australia? Annie. Annie? Do we have any Annie's on the farm? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Nope. So this will be Annie the Australorp. So you can see she's still struggling to breathe, but we do have more of that in the water as well. So she'll continue to get that into her system over the next 24 hours. She's got her food, she's got her warmth here. Some of the other things the Vetrix said you could do is clear out their sinuses, either using like a swab in their mouth, cleaning out their nasal passageway. I haven't really seen much uh, congestion. I haven't really seen much congestion, like snot in their nose, but I saw a little bit maybe on the first day. I haven't seen it since, so I don't think there's too much to clean out that I could reach. So we'll keep checking on her, see if she's doing any better tomorrow. Thanks for your help, boys. Okay. Thank you, Eli. No problem. I feel like we've got her her breathing under control, but then as soon as I work with her, she really seems to get worked up. And right now she's making this crazy gasping sound every fourth, fifth breath. Like she's really trying to catch her breath. So I just gave her some more of this Fed RX on day five and still really struggling to breathe. I hope she's eating and drinking. I'm just not seeing a lot of improvement. So we'll keep her in here under this warmth. So there's no rush to get her back in with the flock or anything, but hoping to see some better improvement because it just doesn't seem like she's getting any better. <laughs> so Poppy either had some frostbite or something, but as soon as the other chickens saw blood, they started picking on it and now her comb seems to be permanently to the side. And so I think when it heals, it's gonna be flopped over more. So we're putting her here with, I think Uriah and I are calling her Annie. Annie the Australorp. We don't have another Annie, do we? Or do no, but we have an No, how about, is there something else that was, that goes with Australorp? Like an Abby? Abby. had an Abby, I don't think. So Poppy will hang out here with Abby the Australorp and hopefully give her some companionship. Walk in. Yay, we got an egg from you. Good. So we know you're getting better. So Poppy is looking really good. She laid an egg. You can see a little bit of injury from her comb getting pecked off, but for the most part, she looks great. Seems really healthy, and she's back laying eggs again, so I feel confident putting her back with the flock. And we've got one other chicken that I know need some help, so, so that'll be a good partner, a good bug mate for our Australorp that's still healing up. So this is our Egyptian Fayumi, and she's been having problems. Look how we found her the other day. She still eats, she still drinks a little bit, but I think, oh man, she's as bony. She's lost all movement, her leg, oh my gosh, I think her leg's turning black. Or healing or something. This is the other leg. 
She can move, but her toes don't move. So it's possible that she could live, go on living, but I think it's a good chance she has frostbite on all of her toes or something happened to where they're not moving anymore. So we're gonna have to come in here, see if there's anything we can do to loosen them up, keep them working, or if it's something where they're gonna, they're gonna fall off because they just got frozen or, or died separate of her body. Spurt and Ernie. Yeah. So it is day 36 for our Australorp pen, and she has been looking so much better. Look what she did today. There's her egg there, and I know it's her. I know it's our Ocelor pen and not our Egyptian Fayumi. Our Egyptian Fayumi, I think she lays a little bit lighter egg. But Cleopatra hasn't been laying much either because of her struggles to get around with her frostbitten toes that we're still, we're kind of working through that a little bit. So how great is that? We don't get many eggs right now because of the time of year and lack of sunlight. So this is one chicken that's been laying for us every day this week. That's awesome. I really like the improvement that I've been seeing her. So I'm gonna give her some more Vet RX drops right now. So I've been coming out every day, giving her a few drops of these, and then most days putting some in her water as well to make sure that her, and it doesn't hurt any of the other birds to have it as well, so. So we'll come back tomorrow, see if she's ready to go to the main flock. I was hoping to get our, our chicken back in with the, the main flock today, but the weather's gonna get pretty cold over the next few weeks. I think we're gonna try something different here inside the quail shed. So while our Australorp hen has pretty much recovered, she seems like she's in pretty good health now. It's just gonna get too cold. It's gonna be in the 30s most days and then down into freezing a lot of the nights. And I just don't wanna put her through any added stress of having to transition from under a heat lamp every day to back out into that and then getting along with the, the other chickens and dealing with roosters. So I think for the next month or two until we get to March, we'll just keep her in this brooder. Now onto Cleopatra here, I think this is gonna be a long-term problem. It may take her life, it may not. Pretty much all of her toes have frostbite and it looks like have probably died. I'm not sure if she'll be able to regain movement into them, but the good thing is that she has the a good portion of the foot. And so by keeping the toes, go ahead. It'll help provide some balance. So even though she doesn't have her toes, I think she'll get along just fine. She still is very active, has a lot of fight left in her, and she's still eating and drinking. And she's still eating and drinking, which is good. So I hate that it happened to her in the, the really cold few days that we had leading up to Christmas. But the good news is that she seems to be doing all right other than that. And, and so I haven't seen too many other frostbite issues with the other chickens, especially not this bad. I've seen like a one or two random ones, but I'm not sure what she did if she was down on the ground or this is just gonna be a lingering issue that she's gonna have. And as long as she's able to keep eating and drinking, I think she'll do all right. But for now, we'll leave her in here. I think she's provided a lot of good company for our Ocelor pen. And so hopefully they'll be able to work together through the next month or two until it warms up outside. It's all right, it's all right. So I think for now, the plan's gonna be to put them up here in this brooder at night so they can have the heat lamp, they can have their, their food and drink up here, and then during the day, I'll put them down here on the floor, and yeah, it's gonna get gross and poopy, but it's not really a, a shed we care much about. We'll sweep it out, we'll clean it out, and then they've got lots of food and water. They've got food and drink down here, and got a little more space to, to roam around and explore in here so they can stay a little more active, because I hate having them in just a really little spot where they only get a little bit of movement every day. So hopefully this will keep them a little more active until they're able to move back to the main flock. Now, if it was any other time of the year, I'd be putting them out in one of our other little chicken tractors that are available right now. I just don't want to push it too far, and I like that they've got a companion in here, and so they're able to keep each other company over the next month or so where we're dealing with some pretty cold temperatures. You okay? Uh, you hurt yourself? That's all right. Oh, you want to see the quail? Ooh, let's go see the quail. Quail are fun. Go, Bella. Got you a quail. Come here. You wanna come see the quail? You wanna pet it? There you go. All right, we'll put them back. Here they go. 